many of you have been reading, and I don't know about you, but I was reading Deuteronomy, and the Pentateuch gets awesome, and it's really good, and finding Jesus, seeing Jesus there is good, but, but when we had to go over the law again and hear Moses' recap of it, and hear all of the ifs and buts and candies and nuts and, and, and all the hoops you got to jump through, and you know, if you're not exactly perfect in the sight of God, then it's hopeless, you know, and I, I actually, I mean, I know Jesus as my personal Savior. I'm baptized full of the Holy Ghost, walking in the glory of God, and I was feeling a little beat up by the law. I was, I started to feel like I could be better. I could, I could do better. I was like, man, I was like, man, this, this chronological thing's hurting. Can't we read a little bit of the New Testament? I just need to breathe. Anybody else feel a little bit like that? All heads bowed, eyes closed. Yeah, it's, it's fun. But it's the Bible, Pastor. It should be inspiring all the way around. Well, you have to see it through the filter of the cross. Otherwise, you would just feel beat up. Amen? All right. Be honest with yourself. Come on. Pastor, don't talk like that about the word. You know. Well, it is the word of God. And, it, and, and I, you know, that it digs such a deep hole for anybody who can't be perfect. You know what that does do for you, though? It does make you cry out, help me. And, and that is the intention of God, is to put you in a place where his righteousness is so far above what I could ever achieve. I need help. And that's really an intention of the whole thing. Could you imagine if you weren't a believer and uh, you came from outer space? <laughs> Not saying I believe in aliens. But, and you just, you know, took Christianity and said, I'm interested in Christianity, so I want to read their document. I want to read their book. And you started from the beginning. I mean, by the time you got to Deuteronomy, you'd be going like, this God is impossible. His standards are so high. And you'd look around and say, I don't see any of his followers actually achieving it. And you would kind of go, man, this don't work. But wow, aren't you glad that you read the gospel? Aren't you glad that you understand the cross? And if you don't understand the cross, boy, you better. And you better understand there's so many, so many blessings that are ours. Today, you're going to be so excited. You know, I titled the, the sermon today, I titled it uh, uh, Freedom from the Evil Eye. Freedom from the Evil Eye, all right? So let's get started. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here we go. The Jesus trip. Oh, you know what? I, uh, okay, I printed off new notes and I don't have them. They're in the photocopier. But I'm going to start where I am. Maybe Kanisha can get them for me. You're awesome, Kanisha. Kanisha's in pastoral services. So. <laughs> go, Kanisha. All right. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, look what it says. It says, yet it isn't I who accuse you. Now, this is Jesus. He's talking to the, the Jews and the religious people today. He says, look, it's not I who accuse you. He says, I don't accuse you before my father because they're questioning him. You know, who are you? And who do you say you are? Blah, blah, blah. And then Jesus said, look, I don't accuse you guys. Moses will accuse you. Yes, Moses, in whom you put your hopes. They're like, what? I mean, we follow all the book of Moses. I mean, we... Word, we'd write down to the detail. I mean, if I got 10, you know, mint leaves in my garden, I pull one off and I tithe. I mean, I'm, I'm immaculate. I cover it all. I'm a really righteous person. And he's saying, look, it's not me who accuses you. Moses accuses you. But then he says, why? Why does Moses accuse you? Because if you really believe Moses, you'd believe me because he wrote about me. So what, what's the book of Moses all about? What, what are all these five books about? All those five books. Moses was writing and Moses was pointing. And when you read the Old Testament, you know what you should be looking for? You should be looking for Jesus. Everywhere in there, you should be looking for Jesus. Deuteronomy 5, 20, 32 to 33. So Moses told the people, you must be careful to obey all the commandments. Now Moses, he's leaving the scene. The folks are going in to possess the land. This is on one day. One day he stood up and he rehearsed this whole thing. And he told them, write this down. And every seven years, I want you to go over this again. And they actually lost this book. They lost it, and the book of Ezra, we find that they found it, and they brought all the people together, and Ezra read the whole thing to them one day, and they all rejoiced, and they all wept, and they all went, oh my. But this is a book that, that Moses wrote to give them final instructions, my final words to you before you enter into the promise. So these are his final words, very important words, but here's what he told them. You must be careful. Say, be careful. All over the place, there's be careful. All over the place, it's remember. All over the place, it's don't forget. All over the place, it's look and attend to every detail. 
heavy duty stuff. So he says, be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, following his instructions on every detail. Stay on the path, say every detail. Every detail, stay on the path the Lord your God has commanded you to follow, and then, say then. So you get to have the then part if you do the ahead part. So you can't have then until you do before. You follow that? So you got to every detail of the law, every detail. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you're about to enter and to occupy. Can I get an amen? And that sounds good, but if you've read all of the things you're supposed to obey, holy mackinac. That's why Jewish people memorized the whole five laws. You know why? Because they had to obey every detail. And the only way to get the blessing of God on your life was to obey every detail of the law. And there are still people today, even in charismatic churches, evangelical churches, there's still people today trying to obey the law, thinking if I obey the law, God has to bless me. There's all kinds of people trying to live a more pleasing life than each other to say, I'm a little more special than you. I should get a little more of God's blessing than you. And there's a whole bunch of other people living in all kinds of condemnation because they're honest with themselves and they realize, I can't do it. You got two types of people. You got the people that are pretending. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right on top. Then you got the other kind who just, they can't take it anymore. And they realize this God is too much. And that's, it's going to lead to either utter despair or pretending. Those are the only opportunities you have. It really is. I mean, if you're in a church where they preach legalism, you either got to start pretending like the rest of them, or you're just going to despair and you're going to quit because uh, I can't do that, if you're honest. But the, sadly, there's all kinds of Christians that are self-righteous and dishonest, and they're pretending that, yeah, I got it all together. Well, good for you. Amen. Get you a gold star from the Sunday school. All right. Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25. And the Lord God commanded us to obey all of the decrees and to fear him so he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey the commands. Everybody say it's the law. The law says you're righteous when you obey all his commands. Let me give you a little quiz, a pop quiz about the rest of the sermon. In the new covenant, when are you righteous? Why? You are awesome people. Isn't that good? But you see, if you read that this week and you thought, oh my goodness, I got to try harder. And if you, you misunderstood and you didn't see this through the filter of the cross, you would have read some stuff and felt condemned and I could do better. And you know what? If you think you could do better, here's what you do even if you think you could do better. You know what you do? Mercy. Mercy. Don't fall back into legalism in a new covenant context. Please. Pastor's a bit punchy today. You know why? Because I hate legalism. And you know why? Because I hate people who prop up the law because the law was not given to set you free. The law is the power of sin. And when you preach the law, you will promote a culture of sin. So I'm serious about this today. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Here's a good word. You ready? Here's a good verse. You ready? The Lord will protect you from all sickness. But then in chapter 28, it says, if you don't obey everything in every detail, he's going to give you the botch. <laughs> My head was spinning. I was going, he's for me. He's against me. He's with me. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me not. I got confused. I got dizzy. All right. Look at this, though. Here it is. You ready? Deuteronomy 14, 8. I love, I look for memory verses, little ones that I can remember and I can kind of pack in my mind. And here's a little one. I like little ones. I like the one little one like Jesus wept. I can remember that. Here's another little one. You ready? You may not eat the pig. And it does say the pig. So I'm not sure if it was a specific pig. I think it was pig in general. Amen. <laughs> You may not eat the pig. Everybody bow your heads, close your eyes right now, bow your heads. Has anyone eaten pig this week? How many are still convinced that bacon is not really pig? 
I put a Canada food guy, and with one I have, bacon is under fruits. Yes, so it's, you wrap everything in bacon, and it's, it's all good. I could have got the wrong one. I don't know, but you know, everything's better with bacon. Amen? You get depressed, you can pray or eat bacon. So... <laughs> So if you come to my house, you smell bacon. You know, pastor's in the flesh this week. It's really bad. All right. All right. Look at this now. Deuteronomy 26, 27, 26. Cursed is anyone who does not affirm and obey the terms of this covenant. And all the people said, amen. <laughs> I'm going to put the standard so high. None of you can do it. And you're only going to be blessed if you obey it all. Amen. <laughs> Man. Is anybody hearing me at all? Is anybody mad at me? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You don't meet my needs. I'm loved by him. I don't care what you think of me. I do a little bit. <laughs> Actually, I do a bit. I still need to. It's, it's my love language. Words of affirmation. Amen. Yeah. That was weak. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Say, Pastor, come on, move on, please. Okay, Deuteronomy 9, 5, and 6. To fulfill the oath he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you must recognize that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land because you are good. So be good and I'll bless you, but honestly, I'm not giving you the land because you're good. I am so confused. Okay. Is anybody else? How many did not actually read Deuteronomy, so you're just sitting here pretending you did? Okay. All right. It's okay. I'll, I'll still preach to you. Okay? All right. So, let me say it. I'm not giving it for you are not good. You are a stubborn people. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Say amen. amen. You are a stubborn people. Okay. <laughs> this was your pastor speaking. Moses was their pastor. All right. So, it's not because you're good. But what was it? It's because I've made a promise to your forefathers. I've made a covenant. I promised Abraham, Isaac. I made a promise, and I'm going to fulfill that promise. And it's going to happen whether you're good or bad. I tell you what, I am bringing. I'm bringing somebody into the land, and my glory is going to fill the earth. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Amen. All right. So Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 I will call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Now, that's some good preaching right there, right? That, you can preach on that. Choose life, brother. See, now, you got to choose life. So this whole thing depends on you. And you see, the old covenant, it all depended on you. And, and if you were going to have the blessing of God, you had to every day, you know, make choices to live right, to obey God. And there was an opportunity. There was blessing on one side and curses on the other, and it's up to you. But then he gave a list of such incredible rules, and he put the bar so high. Thank God Jesus put the bar so low. And that's what's offensive to a lot of people is, so I get all the blessings of God. How? You, you just accept them. You, you just believe that what he says is true. I can do that. It's like a reverse limbo. The bar's really low, and you get to step over. <laughs> I thought that was funny, no? Wow. Okay. All right. So Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. Now here, here's a beautiful verse. This one you should underline. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. The Lord your God will change your heart. The Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and your soul so that you may live. Don't you love that? Now that is something that jumped out at me because all the other stuff was beating the snot out of me. But then suddenly in the middle of it, you see the gospel. In the middle of it, you see Moses speaking and prophesying of something God's going to do for us. He says, I'm going to change your heart. God is going to change your heart so that you will love him with all your heart so that you may live. So you're going to have life because God is going to do the work in you to approve you and to qualify you to live in the blessing of God. That was a really good place to say amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, even if you don't know what's going on, say amen. amen. Let's just spin my notes. A couple pictures. How many like pictures in the middle of a sermon? Thank you, Ben. Anyone else? Talia. Thank you. Stephen. Amen. How many, how many have a picture Bible because you need, need pictures in your Bible? 
Right, now, you can, can hardly see this, but this is in my travels in India, okay? When I'm in India, you'll see a lot of this everywhere, all over the place. Uh, if you can see the axle, see down on the right hand, you see the guy's axle, how he's got that funny face on it? Like, that isn't him just trying to be cute and make a funny face. That is called a Nazar Batu. Nazar Batu. Nazar means evil eye, Batu means to ward off. So this guy clearly believes he's got a really cool truck, and he doesn't want you to envy his truck and therefore curse him and give him the evil eye. So he put that on, and if you put that on your truck, that will absorb all the negative curses and angry and nasty glares. Amen. This is absolutely true. I'm not kidding. I researched it and everything, and it's everywhere. And they see the other guy. He's got a beautiful truck, and he put it. Now, here's another one. This is, now, that's not really a person. But I'm driving around India going through Chennai, and I'm driving by a place, the one place driving around, whoa, man, I, th I thought somebody was hanging, because sometimes they're hung on a noose right in front of a house. And I'm like, what's the deal with that? I mean, man, every time I see one of those, I think that somebody hangs somebody in front of their house. And it looks like some mutilated person stuck in front of the house. I went, what is going on? And so uh, Pastor Jacob said, what's that all about? He says, well, that's what people do to ward off curses. So when you're building a new home, you don't want people to envy you and they say, wow, you're moving up in the world. Look at you. So what you do is while you're building the home, you hang one of those out front. So anyone who's jealous or has envy and thinks you're all that, that absorbs absorbs all the negative energy that absorbs all the curses so that you can still live the blessed life. We're selling them right after church in the foyer. <laughs> all right, here's another one. Here's another. Uh, these are from Turkey, and they do the same thing. In, in Eastern worlds, they, they do this a lot. They're in Nazar Batus. There's things that, that will absorb. And you know who I saw wearing one? Rihanna. You know Rihanna? She's the girl from Barbados, the big singer. She had one, right? She was wearing it like a necklace. You know why she wears that? Because she's so awesome looking. Everybody wants to be her. So everybody gives her the evil eye like, you're not all that girl. And so that pendant absorbs all the evil stuff. Amen? How many want one of those? I want one because you're all looking funny at me right now. <laughs> like, man, I used to tell my mom after, mom, what's wrong with these people? But you're all still happy with me, aren't you? More or less. Amen? Okay. Notice that we do not have a suggestion box. Okay. All right. So let me give you another picture. Are you ready? Now, this is right out of IndiaMart.com. How many have your phone with you and are actually, while I'm preaching, playing Scrabble? Three of you. Okay. Same three. You could Google this right now. You could go to IndiaMart.com, and that little face at the top, that's a Nazar Batu. So you can get that, and you can put it up wherever you like, and it'll absorb all the evil stuff. All right? Do you guys have stuff like this in Africa? Jedrin, do they do that? You guys do that? See, see, the Eastern world, they're really serious about the spirit realm. And blessings and curses are the real deal. And you don't want curses because curses are real. Just like blessings. How many believe blessings are real? If blessings are real. Curses are real. So, so here it is, but listen to this now. Get the adorable Nazar Batu face statue, an ancient cure for warding off the evil eye, used as a wall hanging outside the main entrance of your home or your office. It provokes total protection. It provides total protection. It provides total protection. I took this right from the webpage. This will give you total protection against evil influence and ensure the longevity of its owners. How many want one? Oh, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. That's what, that's, what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to stir up in people right now. That's why I'm doing this. Because I'm trying to get you to... You're catching on. It's good. Okay. So a unique and noble gift item for those who you love and you care for. That's good. Let me give you one more. One more. Now, that's also on the website. I ordered seven of those for our staff so that they can put that on their desk and every time I walk in, they can, you know, that'll take all the negative energy. Amen. I, you know, it sounds like I'm poking fun. I'm not because these people may do this stuff, but they're really serious about this because when, when you go to the Eastern world, they're really serious about the spirit world. They're really serious that there's, there's dynamics out there that are affecting your life. There are real things that are influencing you every day in the spirit realm. And it's really important. And you know what I read to you in Deuteronomy 28? Deuteronomy 28 was saying, there's a force for life that you can engage. And if you don't, 
There's a real, genuine force. If you are outside of the parameters of the life of God, if you are outside of the parameters of faith in Christ, you really are, you really are a slave to sin. You really are a slave to the devil and his works. And I know we don't want to emphasize that a ton, but you know, that's really bad news. And you know, you know what's amazing about day is that there's night. And you know what makes such a contrast is at night, it's really dark. And in the day, it's light. But they're very real. And blessings are blessings. Curses are curses. I say choose Jesus. Because one of those things won't help you a bit. But Jesus will. All right, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. I read that at the offering, right? So you got to, but here it says you got to fully obey the Lord to get that blessing. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. If you refuse to listen to the Lord, then, then it's a curse. It's a mess. Now, if you read in there, it says uh, one of the last things in, in Deuteronomy 28, 68. Here's one of the things from the curse. Your life will constantly hang in the balance. You will live night and day in fear, unsure if you will survive. That's a part of the curse. This, that's in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy says that when you're not living on the blessed side and choosing life, one of the things, one of the aspects of the curse is you will constantly live night and day in fear, unsure if you're going to survive. Wow, that's horrible stuff. Right there in itself, I would say, Jesus because if that curse is really, really real, and God's word is telling us there's a place where it's a mess, and I want to redeem you from that, then I want to choose Jesus. Amen. All right. So I'm trying to dig a hole. If you haven't noticed, I'm digging a hole. Dr. Robert Young, his Bible, he hints in the Bible, it says, uh, hints to Bible interpretation. Not in print anymore. If you still find a copy, it's awesome. But he's the one who also wrote Young's literal translation of the Bible. The King James Version, it's translated, it says, and this is right from his, his hints to Bible interpretation. The King James Version, it's translated with the causative verb, I will bring. See, all these places in Deuteronomy, it says, it says, the Lord says, I will bring sickness upon you. I will bring torment upon you. I will bring pestilence upon you. All these things are, if you don't obey every one of my commands, I'm going to knock the snot out of you. So this whole of Deuteronomy, it really puts, you can, you can have the good God or the bad God. You can have the God that's for you every day, or you can have the God that's going to chase you down, and he's going to mess with you until he totally, utterly destroys you. Now, you know, folks, there are a lot of people that still live in that, and they still believe that you're sick because God's mad at you, and he's trying to teach you something. And God has put this sickness on you because you're living outside. You've somehow let sin into your life, and because you've been disobedient to God, this is afflicting you, and God himself is disciplining you with this because he loves you. That is rubbish. And you would not believe how often you hear it still now in pulpits in this city. No wonder people would say, why bother? We got to know what the good news is. We got to know how awesome it is. It should be translated, it will be permitted. And it's not because God wants to. It's not because that's his desire. But God is literally saying, there's bad stuff that can happen to you. And there's good stuff that can happen. And honestly, choose the good stuff. Not because I want to bring it on you, but it's going to happen if you're outside of the parameters of the blessing of God. So he's saying, please choose blessing, choose life. And then what's so nice about the new covenant is he chose it for you, and he did it all for you, completed it for you, and all you have to do is accept it. That's all you got to do. All right. So Deuteronomy 28, 20, 61, one of those verses. Here it is. The Lord will afflict you, causative. The Lord will afflict you with every sickness and plague there is, even those not mentioned in this book of instruction, until you are destroyed. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Come on, that sounds a little bit nasty, doesn't it? You know, when people don't understand how to read their Bible, even believers don't know understand how to read their Bible, you could get left very, very confused. And you could be put on a nasty performance trip of always trying to figure out, am I pleasing to God? Am I on the good list? And you could be trying and trying and trying and trying and never really, really know if you're fully in God's good book. How are you guys doing? You okay? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move really fast, really fast. Say faster, pastor. 
Okay, so let's go to Galatians. Let's move, let's move, boom, let's move to the new covenant. You ready? Galatians 3, 5, and 6. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law? Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? See, what is the hearing of faith? The hearing is, I just heard really good news. All the blessings of God are available to me just by believing. The hearing that leads to faith. I don't know about you, but I hear good news. I want to believe it. You got to wonder who's telling you the good news because the good news is only as good as the person who tells you the good news. But you know who's telling you the good news? God himself is telling you the good news. And God is faithful. And God says, look, miracles don't happen today because you obeyed the law. They can't happen because you obeyed the law. Miracles happen because I'm good. Miracles happen because you hear that I want to do it, and it comes. But we get a bit legalistic even in our world. Hey? I run into somebody at the mall. Oh, can you pray for me? I just found out I had cancer. Oh, hang on a second. Let's, let's sing for a second. Hallelujah. Oh, God, it's a big problem, God. This is a tough one. We better get the environment of heaven here so that I can heal you. Do you know how that person gets healed? You pray for cancer the same way you pray for a headache. It's the exact same thing. And we get the results because of the finished work of the cross. Not about, I wish I could pray like Pastor Carl does for healing. He just does it so good. I really do. And, <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to have to call somebody else to do that one because this is a tough one. Jesus covered all the tough ones. And I really think if the church would really get into a spirit of faith... Instead of all the mental gymnastics we think we have to go through to finally open the heavens. Let me give you a hint. You ready? The heavens are open. Jesus is the new and living way. We have access not only to salvation, but every single blessing of God simply by faith. Hopefully you're tracking with me today. Could change your whole life. All right. So it's, it's all because he believes. It says, does he do it by the words of my, or by faith? It's faith. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. The righteousness we need can only come by faith. Galatians 3.10, but he who is, depends on the law to make you right with God, whoever depends on the law to make themselves right with God is under his curse. So if you've got any friends that are telling you, you know, don't eat pork and you'll get the blessing of God on your life, you know. If you've got friends that are, you know, stay away from, you know, shell foods. I mean, my goodness, you know, you, you'll be cursed if you do that. They are already living under the curse. Because here's what Paul said. Paul said, anyone who depends on the law to, to make the right with God is under a curse. Amen. You know what? If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're not under a curse, even if you think you shouldn't eat pork. All right. Because it says, and I think it's Isaiah 48, it says, I've seen your willful ways, I've seen your willful ways, and yet I will heal you. So I don't even want to turn Christianity into performance. Because even your silly little stuff of trying to perform the law, if you're trying to perform the law to get in and be made right with God, you're under his curse. All right? For the scripture says, curses is everyone who does not observe to obey all of the commands that are written in the book of the law. And that's where Paul went to the book of Deuteronomy that we just read. And he pulled this out of Deuteronomy. And he said, folks, it's all about Jesus. The law was all about you trying to be pleasing to God. But Jesus is all about he did it all, so you are pleasing to God. And now I live out of his righteousness because he granted it to me and filled me with the spirit of Christ to do it all. Amen. So let's wrap this up, pastor. Come on, wrap it up. All right, wrap it up. First Galatians 3, 14 to 13 to 14. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Please sit back down. Stop running around the room. Did you read the curse of the law? Did you look at all that stuff? It's horrible. Even the botch. Jesus redeemed you from the curse of the law. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And you know what? We need to manifest that. We really do. So he redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, as is written, curse is everyone hung on a tree, that, that a 
purpose clause that, number one, that the blessing of Abraham might come on us, which is justification by faith alone. So the blessing of Abraham and all that blessing by faith, I am walking in all the blessings of Abraham, blessed in everything I do. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. And number two, that purpose clause that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. So I am blessed. Not only am I blessed, but the power of the Spirit is in me to manifest that blessing in every aspect of my life. So he didn't just call me blessed. He gave me the power to live on the inside of me to make that blessing manifest in every aspect of my life. It's good news, George. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. All right, let's hit another slide. They're getting overexcited now. They're redeemed. Ex garazzo. To recover from the power of another crisis freed us, freeing men from the dominion of the Mosaic law. The power of sin is the law. And Jesus redeemed you from the power once and for all, totally set you free, got you out of the slave market, and set you in himself, never to be put in slavery ever again. All right, just pinch your neighbor, see if they're still breathing. Amen. Romans 4, 3, for all the scripture tells us, Abraham believed God and he was counted him as righteous because of faith. Genesis 12, 2 and 3, just a little bit of the blessing of Abraham. Here's the blessing, Abraham. You ready? I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I live in a cul-de-sac. You come to the cul-de-sac and the road ends. See, the blessing of God is not a cul-de-sac. It doesn't end there. The blessing of God is a bridge. The blessing of God that comes to you, it's supposed to explode out of your life in so many diverse ways that the blessing of God impacts everything around you. And not only are you blessed, but everything and everyone you know experiences the blessing of God. Just like Peter's shadow, he just had to walk down the road and the oozing, oozing blessing of God was touching everything around him. That's how we're to live. Every day, he wants to make you famous. Oh, I don't want to be famous. He really does. He really wants you to be so outstanding in every single way that the only explanation of your life is this. I am a child of God. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. I'm telling you, we're going, we're wrapping it up. Why am I going so fast? I don't know. Can I slow down? Okay. <laughs> The promise, well, Romans, uh, Reformation, the Reformation, the just shall live by faith, just shall live by faith, just shall live by faith, just shall live by faith. Reformation in the 1500s, Martin Luther. I did a, I, I did a, read a biography on Martin Luther, did my first book report in grade six. First book report I ever, I don't even know why. But I think it was God, I really do. Just a kid in the library, not even Christian school or anything. I just had to find a book in the library, read it and do a book report in grade six. And for some reason, I pulled out a biography on Martin Luther. And I read the life of Martin Luther, and it touched me. And I saw somebody who was trying to be pleasing to God, and he finally got the revelation through this verse that you can't make yourself pleasing to God. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So the law says, do this. Are any doers here today? Any achievers in the room? I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I mean, that's what just nails me all the time about being a believer, is that it's simply by faith, it's simply by accepting it, but I actually want to be a little bit better than you. God, can't I be a super believer? Can't I be just a little bit above the crowd? He said, no, Carl. There's only one front row in my sanctuary, and everybody's on it. <sighs> can't I have the most special seat? I'm no... I, I don't distinguish between any of you. I love you all. But you know what? There's people who teach and preach that you could be a little bit more special than the other people. If you just try harder than all the other believers, you could be a more special believer. <laughs> Jesus did it all. All. And I don't put anything. He gave me a robe of righteousness, and I can't even put a sticker on it. He gave me a robe of righteousness, and I can't alter it or change it one little bit. My qualification for being in his presence and for living with him forever is because he alone has clothed me in what I stand in. It's by faith alone, not by works, so no one can boast. And you got churches that got people on treadmills all trying to be better, you know, like, 
Can I usher every Sunday? I'll be there. Can I clean the toilets? They're clean. Can I clean them again? I just want to be used by God. And you know what? You should clean the toilets. Who has not cleaned this toilet yet here? Today, you're staying behind. Some days there's some accidents in there and you're like, Lord Jesus, glad it's not my turn. You know? Here's the gospel. You ready for the gospel? The law says do this. The gospel says accept this. Just accept it. Oh, really? Every day, victory. Every day, joy. I like a little variety in my life. I like to be depressed on Tuesday. But every day I wake up, big wet kiss from God. Love you, got great plans for you. Stop it. It's my depressed day. Shake it off. Come to Raymond on Tuesday and you'll be blessed. But you know what, literally, I, I know Cheryl hates it when I say you're condemned to victory. But literally, you are locked down. You can't escape it. Victory is your day-to-day -day experience. You see, glory to glory. You know where you start in that plan? You start in glory. It starts in glory. It doesn't start with miserable to glory. It's glory to glory. You know what it is with God? It's strength to strength. It's good to good, better to better, happy to happy, joy to joy. Woo! And why did I get all of this, Pastor? Because I just accepted the gospel. Jesus died for me. He set me free. He redeemed me out of slavery. And I am forever free. And I'm forever a child of God. Baptized in the Holy Ghost, spitting fire, anointed with joy every day of my life. Hallelujah. Romans 7, 6, but now we have been released from the law for we died to it and we are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. Amen. And all the law obeyers said, oh, see, I got you right there. You're a law obeyer. That's pretty bad, you know. You know, hey, Simon says, all right, yeah. all right, the promise, the Holy Spirit, not only looking to, to the righteousness of Christ in heaven, but the basis for which I stand with God, but the righteousness of Christ, the spirit of Christ is actually put in your heart to radically change your life now, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. Hebrews 8, 12 and 13, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more in that he says a new covenant. Does anybody get an iPhone 3? Anyone got an iPhone 3? Show it to me right now. Why do you not have it? Because it's obsolete. And Apple does that on purpose so that you have to buy the next one. They make it so screwed up it won't function. That's why they're millionaires. They depend on us being compulsive and wanting 10. The XR, the XRS 1440 with the big screen and the touch. There's something new. And this is Sue. Sue watches for all the advances, and she wants every techie thing going on. If you want to know what's new in technology, talk to Sue, because she's on the bleeding edge of technology. <laughs> but listen, a new covenant, it made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete is vanishing. And he was saying this to a, a Jewish people in the first century. And he's saying, guys, quit trying to obey the law. It's vanishing. It's done away with. It's obsolete. Just trust in Jesus. Please, all you law keepers, it's done. It's obsolete. Stop it. Stop it. All right, next slide. Abba, Daddy. Oh, boy, Galatians 4, 7 says, send forth the Spirit in us, crying, Abba, Father. You have to be born of the Spirit to say that. The old covenant, God is holy. Fear him. Keep your distance. The new covenant is God's our Father. He loves us. We can trust him, and we can boldly approach. It's a radically, radically, radically different message, and yet in churches today, we're preaching both sides of the thing, and no wonder people are so confused. Okay, thank you. This corner's doing really well. The old covenant, you serve God. The new covenant, God serves you. Oh, I still want to serve God. God, you don't have to serve me. 
So that's Peter. Don't wash my feet. Don't wash. No, God, God, don't wash. I have to wash your feet, Peter. You can't have any part of me. Okay, then wash all of me. Yes, yes. Because Peter constantly wanted to be different from everybody else, right? You know? No, Lord, I'm too humble. Don't wash my feet. I need to wash feet. Okay, wash me all then, Jesus. Crazy stuff, isn't it? It's a new covenant. God serves you. Isn't that amazing? Hey, in the old covenant, be careful, be careful, do it all, do it all. In the new covenant, it's like, I took care of it. It's like you go out for lunch with Jesus, and he covers the bill every time with a big, massive tip. And you're like, one of these days, I'm going to beat you. One of these days, I'm going to get the check. One of these days. He said, they covered it all. All right, Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give many his life as a ransom for many. John 15, 12. Now this is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. You can never even love people properly unless you've let him love you. You can never really express his love until you become vulnerable enough to say, love me, love all of me, take me, every bit of me. And then, only then, when you've experienced his love, can you actually love. And you can't serve another person until you've let him completely, totally serve you. There was an amen coming from the back row. I saw one. I think, Chuck, was that you? Amen? Amen, okay. I, I saw it was like a cloud over his head. You know, like those comic books? Like, like I think it was, amen. Okay. All right. This is not a systematic way to make your life better. This is not how to be more moral or more good. It's not the point. The point of Christianity is you can't do that. And your need is not for a better life. Don't go to church because you need a better life or a better wife or better anything. You don't go to church for that. What you go to church for is because you needed new life. So you don't, you don't get a renovation when you come to God. He blows the whole thing up. And then he creates you anew and afresh. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And because I'm a new creation and I'm perfect and I'm holy and I'm absolutely righteous, he can put his Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in me to manifest his very nature and power and authority and blessing everywhere I go. What is the promise of the Spirit? It's called the blessing of the Father. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Why are you blessed? Jesus. Because I accept the gospel. Wrapping it up, you ready? Hebrews 4, 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but in all points he was tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. One cr- person lived the Christian life perfectly, and it wasn't you. I want to study this out, pastor, so I can do it better. I just want to be taught more so I can be a good Christian. And that's noble. I mean, that's a good way to think. But you know what? Somebody already did it. One person broke through. And here's the good news. Because it was God himself in the flesh who broke through first, we all get a pass and we all get the same benefits. We just have to show up at the door and say, Jesus, why should you get in here? Jesus, why should you have any benefits of the blessings? Jesus, why should you be healed today? Jesus, why should you be free of everything in Deuteronomy 15 and after, including the botch? Jesus. Is anybody here blessed today? You are all blessed. And I'm telling you, there are curses. There is real, real darkness out there. And some of your greatest friends and people you love are covered with it. You got to quit being a cul-de-sac and you need to be a bridge because the blessing didn't get on you for you. The blessing got in you to give it to other people. And your life should be so radically different that people are literally, take me to your leader. Whatever's going on in your life, it is so radically different. It is so unexplainable what's going on with you. I want some. One more slide, I do believe. Proverbs 26, 4 to 15. Like a flitting sparrow and like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. Now, I used to read that, that if there's a curse on your life, you know why. You know, curses don't just drop on people, folks. If your life's a mess, it's because you deserve it. It's not random. It doesn't just happen. It happens because you're a screw-up. 
So what you need to do is you need to do an inventory of your life and you need to figure out where you screwed up because then finally you can qualify yourself for healing and blessing and breakthrough. How many read it that way before and you're willing to admit three people? How many have never read the verse before? How many are afraid to move your hand? <laughs> I love the Living Bible. It's where the, the NLT came out of. The Living Bible is the platform for the NLT because the Living Bible is just a paraphrase and the NLT is a translation. But the Living Bible is so great. And I think it's one of the best translations of the Bible. But here's how the Living Bible does Proverbs 26. An undeserved curse has no effect. Its intended victim will be no more harm than a sparrow or a swallow fly around in the sky. That's a sparrow flying over your head. What are you doing? I saw a sparrow. Imagine if every time a bird flew over, I'd really, ah, ah. I mean, after you saw the movie Birds, you were a little freaked out, but some never, who saw the movie Birds? Good, so you do duck once in a while. But look at this, you know what, listen, you're blessed. And when you're blessed, you know what? No curse can affect you. You are never, ever a victim, never. It doesn't matter what has been pointed at you, it doesn't matter what evil eye, it's all been warded off. Because of Jesus. You know, it almost makes me want to actually get across and wear it just so I can remember and remind myself that I really am free. And you know, the cross took every evil intention towards me, past, present, and future. And sometimes I just want to grab that and say, I really, 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 really am condemned to victory every day. Nothing, no undeserved thing can come upon you because you are a child of God. Amen. And the root of that word curse, actually the root of that word curse is grace. That word that's translated curse there, the root of it is grace. And it's because you are graced, because you have grace on your life, no curse can touch you. And it's the root of that word. Come on, stand up with me and bow your heads and close your eyes. And thank you, Jesus. 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 And I don't have to put a sticker on my truck. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to hang a mummy outside the building of my new house. I, you know, there's really curses there, but you know what? I am immune from every evil thing because I am a child of God. I am immune. Not one undeserved attack can, can light on my life because of the grace of God, because I am favored by God and I am graced by God every day. God has put me in the life column. God, he says, choose life. He says, today I put before you life and death, choose life. God chose a life for me and he fulfilled every requirement for me and now all I have to do is accept it. I just got to accept it. You know, there's such a massive list of sickness in Deuteronomy 28. And if you look at it, I mean, he went through that, and he went through that list on purpose to show you all the things that you're free from because you're blessed. And it's that simple. And what got you free? The cross. The cross forgave your sins. The cross healed all your diseases. And you're free. That has no right to light on you. It has no right to afflict you. It has no right to touch you. Even if you've been a really bad person, you know what God says, I've seen your willful ways, and yet I will heal you. I will heal you. It is the will of God to heal you. He doesn't only have the ability to heal you. He wants to heal you. All kinds of sinners came to Jesus. All kinds of broken lives came to Jesus. And he touched them and they were healed. They touched him. I mean, he didn't say, you know, accept me as your savior. See this special prayer and I can heal you. The blind man got healed. He didn't even know who Jesus was. Healing is what he does. And healing is your covenant right. He is Jehovah Rapha, the covenant God who heals you. And he has condemned you to the blessed life. The blessed life. The blessed life. Now listen, maybe you're here today and you've never made that decision. I've never accepted Jesus. I never chose. I never agreed with what he did on my behalf. I never aligned myself with that. I didn't even know the news was that good, but I want to accept it now. If you want to accept it now, I want to pray with you. If you've never said, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior, 
be the one who sets me free. If you've never done that, I want you to do it today. And I'm going to count to three, just so you know exactly when to do it. I'm going to go one, two, three. At three, put up your hands. Say, pray for me, pastor. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Just throw your hand up very high so I can see it. Throw it up high so I can see it. Throw it up high. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Jesus. Let's pray. I want you all to pray with me. You raise your hand, you pray. Use your mouth, use your lips. Confess him as your savior. Are you ready? Lord Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and my savior. I accept you as my redeemer. And I declare right now that I am forgiven I am healed and I am free. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Could I have the altar ministry teams come on up here right now? If you're on altar ministry. Listen, folks, the blessing is yours. You know, one of the ways that the blessing is realized, one of the ways it's transmitted is the laying on of hands. If you got sickness in your body in any way or any form, you can get prayer today and get ministered to do. If you got any manifestation of the curse trying to encroach on your life, it's a lie. And if you need anybody to agree with you and get it broken off of you, there's prayer at the altar here today. The blessing of God is yours. The blessing of God is yours. The blessing of God is yours for being a believer and accepting this truth. So I command you blessed right now in Jesus' name. I pray right now the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, revealing in you, to you, and through you all the good news of the kingdom of God. I loose you to minister right now, everywhere you go, the goodness of God, the grace of God, the life of the kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, amen.